Hi, my name is Brian Huber. I'm a waterfowl biologist for California Waterfowl, and I'm also the Wood Duck Program Coordinator. Today we're going to go through the process of building a wood duck box. We're going to show you the steps, all the different parts, and why they're the certain dimensions that they are. So what you see in front of me is a kit. All of this stuff has been pre-cut. Um, everything has been done, so everything on this kit, you just need to basically glue it and screw it together. Um, if you're interested in figuring out how to get all these cuts, we have all the plans on our website. You can go on California Waterfowl website, find the wood duck program, and look up the dimensions to cut all these parts out. So the first piece we have here is going to be the front. You can see it has this elliptical hole. Now this hole has been designed specifically, um, it's a three inch by four inch elliptical hole. And the reason why it's this size is that's the size that wood ducks prefer to go into. So if it gets any bigger, the wood ducks don't want to go in there because predators can get in there. And obviously if it's smaller, the wood ducks can't fit in there. So this hole is about the right size. Um, we cut this out. We actually have a CNC machine that cuts this out, but you can use a router. Um, you can use a jigsaw if you're careful, anything to get that kind of similar elliptical hole pattern. And we usually put it about three inches below on the top of the box here. As you look on the inside, this is the most important part. Um, we have a ladder cut into this box. So if you're gonna fill this box with wood chips and then these ducklings are gonna use this ladder to climb out of the box and eventually jump out of the hole once they hatch. So that's the front. We have the lid. The lid has a couple slats on it here. This just helps hold it in place once we get it built. We've got a bottom. The bottom has these holes drilled in it. This is gonna help with any kind of water that gets in there so it can drain out of the box and kind of add a little air ventilation as well on the bottom. You're gonna have two sides. Both of these sides are pre-drilled. You can see the holes already drilled in them. So all we have to do is add screws. And then we have our back piece. Now our back piece is a little bit longer than these other pieces because we use the bottom part to mount it to a tree or a pole and you'll see that process a little bit later. So what we have here is a little jig. Um, I built this jig to be the same height, as you can tell, as my sides and my, or the back and the front. So what this does is it just helps me hold it up. So what I'm gonna do is find my front, and I'm gonna use this jig. Try and do it so you can see better. I'm gonna put the front of the box in front of the jig here, and then I'm gonna find my side, this is not my side. So here's my side, it's got pre-drilled holes on it. And this basically is just helping me hold up, hold up the box while I try and glue it and screw it together. Okay. So the glue we like to use is a Type Bond 3. This is good glue for outdoor, it's waterproof, it's for exterior. So this is uh, the glue that we prefer to use. Um, we use screws, these are number eight by inch and a half and five eighths inches. So these are exterior screws. You wanna use exterior screws. Obviously these boxes are gonna go outside. So what I like to do is start these screws on this one side, kind of get it started. You got all these pre drills holes ready to go. Put it in there. And then you're just gonna run a really small bead of glue across the top here. Not a ton, just enough to kind of cover it. When you smash it down, it'll spread it out and be just fine. Just a small line of glue there. And the biggest thing that you want to line up is the top here. So you want to really make sure the top here is nice and flush. And so we got it nice and flush there and we're going to drive this screw in. There we go. Now we can move down to this screw, make sure it's lined up, line up the bottom, screw it in. Finish out the other screws. Okay, so now we have one side and the front done, and now we gotta move on to the back. So we find our back piece, we get it lined up, and now this is where you gotta be careful. You gotta figure out where your hole is, and then you want your overhang to be on the bottom. So we gotta slide this down on this side now so that our overhang, our hole's on top here and our overhang's on the bottom here. Get these screws in.
Okay, now you're gonna run another small bead of glue and you just wanna be careful not to go past where your wood's here. So we'll, we're gonna start there so we don't go past it. Get a nice little bead of glue on there. And now we're gonna line up the top. Like I said last time, we wanna make this the part that's nice and square for our lid to fit on good. Okay, we can come down to the bottom now. Okay, there we go, we're getting closer. Now we've got three sides of this box on. And now we don't need the jig anymore because it's gonna hold itself up. Now I like to put the bottom piece in to make sure it's gonna fit. This is the piece that sometimes needs some trimming, sometimes it fits perfect. This one looks like it's gonna fit pretty good. So we can uh, put that in there for now and then we're gonna put our other side on now. When you get plywood, I like to kind of look at the wood and see which side looks better. This one's got some writing on it, so we're going to put that on the inside. The bottom's going to fit in fine, so I can go ahead and keep working on uh, putting this last side piece on. So I'm going to run a bead of glue on both of these now, making sure not to go past where my overhang is on the bottom here. start all these screws now the glue is really the bond here the screws are just kind of holding it together it actually um, helps a little bit but mostly that bond with the glue is what's going to hold these boxes together Okay, so I, like I said, I always start on the top here. I like to have that corner nice and flush and clean. So I'll tap that one in first. And I'll move to this side. put the bottom in make sure it still fits it looks pretty good now I'm gonna glue in this last finish screwing in this last side now this is the part you might have to hold it a little bit to kind of get it flush and it's nice and flush right there Okay, we got the box part done for the most part. We're gonna finish doing the bottom here. So there's some pre-drilled holes on here. Get these screws started. And line up our bottom one, that's what I'm start. Okay, so you just want to make sure your bottom's in there nice and straight. You can tap it to line it up. Two more screws on the other side. to finish off the bottom okay that's pretty much it we've got the box built you can see got the hole in the right spot the overhang on the bottom here everything's put together last thing to do is just put the lid on the lid has some pre-drilled holes in it too so we just add two screws here them in. And there's a built wood duck box. So like I said, the holes in a certain spot, um, this, this 
keeps a, a full-grown raccoon from sticking its head in here and trying to get the box and it's also the depth here is also key because that's how far down a raccoon can reach so this is uh, 23 inches long I believe and that's the the right distance you put about four to five inches of wood chips in the bottom here and then that's a good nesting box so now uh, I'm gonna get into the process of how we like to mount these things so um, you can mount wood duck boxes on trees. However, you can have issues with predators. So we recommend putting them on a metal pole. And as soon as we're done mounting these brackets, we'll go outside and show you guys how to mount them on a box or on a metal pole. Um, we buy these Simpson strong ties from box stores. Um, these are made specifically for the pipes that we have, the two and uh, five eighths, I believe, um, pipe that we install these on with. So these are uh, very good. You mount them to the box and then you can just um, put them on the pole and tighten them down and they last for a really long time. So I'm gonna just find the center of this box real quick. So about 12 inches. So we're gonna go six to center on both sides here. And this is just uh, rough, rough stuff. You don't have to be too precise with this. So. We're gonna mount it, uh, line it up to the center here, and we're gonna mark our holes. And we're gonna move down to this side with our other bracket and mark our holes here. Okay, we got our holes marked. We're gonna drill those out now. We got those drilled. Okay, so I got the hardware here. These are just uh, quarter by 20 hex bolts. Um, we've got four fender washers, quarter inch, some lock washers, and regular old hex nuts. So this is how we put them together. Um, I like to put it so that the screw is sticking up so it's not inside the box. You, uh, put a fender washer on it first, then come up through the hole into your bracket. Put a lock washer on it and then the hex nut. Same thing here. Fender washer, lock washer on the top, hex nut. And then same thing for the bottom bracket here. Tighten these down, so we're gonna switch out our bit. My extension. And just snug these down, and then the last thing we need to do is uh, mount these on a pole. We do need to add wood chips to it, so we're gonna add wood chips right now. I prefer the flake. You wanna buy the flake wood chips. I get these at Tractor Supply. You get them at most pet stores. Uh, the biggest thing is you don't want really fine dust because that can actually uh, get into their breathing system and you don't wanna do that. So this is kind of very coarse, uh, big flaky wood chips and that's what we want. So we're gonna put, um, we usually put about five to six inches in the bottom there, and that's enough for these ducks to build a nice nest bowl and have enough cover. Wood ducks don't bring any nesting material into boxes, so that's why it's important that you supply these and that you maintain them every year and you add new wood chips every year. So we're just gonna add some chips here.
little more and we're good. So you can look in there, you can see hopefully that the wood chips are going in. Um, they're at a level where the ducklings are going to be able to climb up this ladder and that's going to be a good perfect for wood duck box. Okay, we got uh, the brackets mounted on the box, we got wood chips in it and now the next step is to go outside and mount this sucker on a pole. Okay, we found a good spot here to put a wood duck box. So I've got a, this is called an eight foot terminal post. We get these at any of the box stores. Um, this is used for like cyclone fencing when they do a corner and it's a nice sturdy, it's a little over two inches wide and uh, we're gonna install the box now. What I like to do to start uh, installation is I actually get this post in these brackets before we start beating on it. Um, so we kind of slide these on here. Sometimes it can be a little difficult. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna use this pole pounder. We're gonna mount this thing. We're gonna just beat this pole in the ground about a foot or so. That should be good as long as you're not leaning up on the pole and then you just slide this box up. Use that for now. And the last step is to just secure the brackets here on the back. So you just uh, run these on here. And that's it, you got your box installed, ready to go. Wood chips, pull, everything's ready to go now. Thanks for watching How to Build a Wood Duck Box. Um, if you guys want any more information on building boxes, we have a bunch of plans available on our website, California Waterfowl under the Wood Duck Program. Um, this is a volunteer-based program. It's a really great way to get involved uh, in conservation. You can put wood duck boxes out just about anywhere and they'll get used. Uh, thanks to our volunteers, our district managers, this spring we're gonna hatch out our one millionth wood duck. So very valuable program to conservation in California.